Hey, what's up friend? Jacob here as always. And today in this episode, what we're gonna do is measure anything critical to make sure that uh, we can order all of the standard engine components so that we can throw the engine back together. We don't wanna order standard parts and find out the crankshaft has had a repair done to it or something and we actually needed a repair size bearing or whatever. So uh, just to cover our butts, we're gonna make sure that everything is measured correctly and uh, then we'll get those parts coming. So let's jump right into it. Go back, 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 back. Okay, to start off, um, I'm using a set of micrometers from Harbor Freight. If you don't know how to use a set of micrometers, then I recommend looking it up on YouTube or on Google. I learned how to do it on Google um, and it helped a lot. So the next step is to, uh, we need to take a look at the front of the crank here. And in order to do this correctly, you need to take the sprocket off of the front here. And in order to take that sprocket off, it's pretty easy. There's two pieces along with the crank. So you have your sprocket and you have this uh, key here and, or the slot for the key. And here's our key. You get a, uh, a puller tool and you, you grab around here with the puller tool. You put the part that uh, screws in at the front of the crank and you grab, have the arms grab around here and then it easily, very easily just slides right off. For reference, this is the puller tool that I'm talking about. It's pretty self-explanatory. Front of the crank, and then these grab the sprocket, and then you just take it off. So with the sprocket off, at the front, you can see that there are a whole bunch of uh, numbers and letters here. What you do is you take a look at the sequence of letters. There's gonna be seven or eight letters, I think it's eight. And the first seven of the eight letter sequence is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the main bearing journals and the sizes that they were when they left the factory. If this has ever had a repair done to it, then obviously these are not going to be the same size as what is here. It's going to be a repair size and you'd have to get repair size bearing for that journal. So uh, you wanna take this for reference and then in my case, this crank, uh, this is like t two and a half inches right here. This is, uh, the main journals are two and a half inches wide. So um, if you don't know though, uh, if you're not working on this engine specifically, uh, you can take a, a caliper, come in here and just get a quick measurement off of it roughly. So we're at two inches, 0.3, so 2.3 inches. So we know that we can use our two to three inch uh, we can use our two to three inch micrometer here. And so now what we're gonna do is we're going to take our micrometer and there's a little trick to this. So because our crank is, uh, this journal is, is uh, circular, obviously, these flat points don't want to sit perfectly on that rounded surface. So the trick to it is to get this as close as possible as, imagine drawing a line straight through the center and have this be that point of the line that goes through and look down at it like this and do your best to get it as even and, and as flat as possible. And then once you have your measurement, you can lock this here. And then we can check our measurements. So this is gonna start off at two inches. So this measurement is going to be 2.2822 inches. This being bearing journal three, we can reference the front of our crank and take bearing journal three, which is the letter G. If we look this up online, uh, G is going to reference to, and I have this written out here, it's going to reference to the letters from the front of my crank. It's G, 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 R, G. Um, and the last one does not matter. I don't know what that's for. I think that may be the uh, measurement for this here. I don't know though. But uh, our these are our crank measurements from the factory. And then my measurements, I already measured across this whole thing. I got 2.2822 across all of them. Um, I think R is, man, it's just slightly different than G, but it's still one of the standard sizes. So we can still use standard bearings there. Um, and so taking my measurements and converting them to metric, I got 57 0.96 millimeters and that crosses to each of these sizes here. So uh, uh, I know that all of my main bearing journals, all of them measure correct. 
and the same from factory. So I know now that I can use on this crank all of the standard factory bearings. Um, there is no wear done. The only amount of damage is up here on the number one journal and I can just barely feel this line here. It's just barely there. I'm just gonna polish it and uh, walk away. Next, we can measure our crank rod journals. So taking a look here at our connecting rods, uh, all of them across all six are going to be the connecting rod uh, bearing journals. They all come out to 47.96 millimeters, which is that 1.888 inches. Um, uh, the factory calls for 47.96 millimeters, and each of these come out to basically this. So um, the connecting rod bearing journals are all good as well. So that's awesome. Um, next, is the bore. I measured the bore in several locations and here is how I did that. Okay, so the way that I measure the bores, I'm gonna tell you right now, is not the right way. But I do not have the money to get um, the tool that measures uh, inside surfaces like this. What I did is I got a set of these. Uh, I picked these up online. I can sh I'll, I'll have a link down in the description for these. I think these were like 30 bucks. And you can see that they have uh, ranges. And I'm going to use E. And here's how this works here. So these press in, they're spring-loaded, both sides. And when you, when you are taking a measurement, you get them wherever they're supposed to be and you rotate this bottom piece here to lock it in place. And so what you wanna do is make sure that you are in here perfectly not bent to the side. You don't want to be twisted or anything like that. You want to make sure that you are absolutely perfectly sitting inside of here, perfectly straight. So this is pretty close. I'm going to rotate this and get it locked. So I have the inner diameter measurement. So I'll take my caliper, open it up. I know that these bores, they're supposed to be uh, in inches, 3.539 something. So I'll take this measurement here. This is pretty difficult taking this measurement here like this. It's kind of difficult. So the measurement that I'm getting comes out to 3.5 just below below 3.54. So the measurement there is uh, looks correct. Really what you need to do is measure every single one of these bores in like three different places upper cylinder, middle, and then lower. And then you wanna rotate 90 degrees or like 70 degrees or something, and then measure from that location as well, all three spots down. I didn't go that far. I just checked in a couple spots in each one, just checking to see if they're all exactly the same, and they were. So now we know, once you've measured all of your bores all the way across, now we know that they're uh, perfectly, perfectly round. Um, like I said, you wanna make sure that you measure in several places across each one. And then what you wanna do is you wanna, if you're worried about flatness across your head, you can take a straight edge and lay it across at different angles. Make sure that it's perfectly flat. The next thing you can check is to make sure that all of your main bearing locations right here, you can take a straight edge and lay it across through here and make sure that this is completely flat as well. I have already done that and it is completely flat. Next, I'm not going to measure my cam bearing locations. I'm not going to measure them because I've looked across them and they all look pretty clean. No wear or anything like that. The rest of the engine isn't showing any wear. There's no scoring or anything on this. The head, there's no bearings that sit in the head. It's just the aluminum that this sits in. So, and the aluminum that this sits in in the head, all the journals in the head, they all look fine. So I'm gonna leave this alone. I'm not even gonna measure it. And same with the intake cam, it's up over there. So the next thing is to measure our wrist pins. And the way I'm gonna measure the wrist, wrist pin, I'm going to use this one inch micrometer, open this thing up pretty far, and I'm going to do it the same way that I did the uh, journals for the crank. So I'm gonna come in here, make sure that it's perfectly straight across and flat, and slowly rotate in until it, it grabs pretty good. Carefully slide off and lock it if you're worried about it moving. And then we can take our measurement. So this is zero to one, so it zeroes out at zero inches. And so we've got eight, almost to our third tick mark in there. So 0.8565 uh, because it's 15. 
So 0 0.86566 eight. So it's 0.8668. And what you want to do is you want to measure every single one of your wrist pins. I do not know the measurement for this, but if you measure, oh, this is the number three wrist pin for piston three. If you measure here and here, and then uh, maybe right here where it's dark, where uh, there was not really any wear, this is, uh, the dark spot is going to be where there was just oil sitting and it wasn't wearing against anything or it wasn't riding against anything. Uh, if you measure there um, against everywhere else and all of it comes back as the same measurements, then you know that this still is in factory condition. Um, and I've already done that across all of my wrist pins. And for the connecting rods, I will not be actually taking a measurement inside of here, but I just want to make sure that there's no wear, there's no noticeable wear. So this wrist pin bushing, it's a little bit difficult to see Okay, there you go. Right there, you can see there's just barely, barely a tiny little bit of of uh, wear. You can see it kind of goes from that brass. It's supposed to be like a brass color. Oh, you can see when the light hits it like that. You can see there's a little bit of like a grayish look to it. I don't think I'm going to replace this bushing. When I, when I take this wrist pin and I slide it inside of the connecting rod, and I wiggle it up and down. I can't even feel play right there. There's no play there. Let me slide this all the way in. I want to try to get it right in the center, and then I want to wiggle this up and down. But there's supposed to be just a little bit of play, because uh, there's supposed to be just a hair of a gap, so that there can be that oil front as this presses along. There needs to remain that oil front. So a little bit of play is okay. I don't think I'm going to replace the bushings. I don't think I'm going to replace the bushings. Okay, so having looked at the crank, the wrist pins, we've measured all the journals, we've measured the block, the bores. Um, with all of that out of the way and everything looking factory standard good, um, I don't think there's really any more measuring that has to happen. Make sure there's just no damage or excessive wear to anything. After taking these critical measurements here, specifically, we're going to look at the main journals, the connecting rod journals, and the bores in the engine because that's going to be where our main bearings sit the connecting rod bearings and our piston rings and if those three critical areas are all good and there's no excessive wear or any damage um, everything else as long as you've inspected it everything else should go back together just fine so for me what i'm going to do is i'm going to order all factory standard everything i'm not going to replace any major parts the only thing that I'm definitely going to need is a new valve cover. Like I said before, you can see here, that is just done for. This valve cover is done. It is done. It is, it is just corroded. I think this is made of magnesium. I think some of the valve covers for this engine were made of magnesium, and some of them were made of aluminum, and I just so happen to have a magnesium one that is just falling apart. All right, so now that we have everything measured out and it looks like everything is going to go back together standard, uh, like from the factory, which is great news. Um, now the next step is to get all the gaskets for the engine. Um, I think there's a whole engine gasket set. If not, you can get gasket kits for the upper and lower engine. Um, and then connecting rod bearings, main bearings, piston rings, and all that kind of fun stuff. We can get all that coming. Um, I actually already have that stuff here, so I'm opened up for the next episode that's coming. Uh, it's going to be probably, definitely polishing up the crank, and then probably seating the crank and pistons inside of the engine block. Um, so that's awesome. That's great for me to look forward to so that we can start getting the engine back together instead of it laying around in my garage in pieces. So um, if you guys are getting value out of this content, please leave a like and definitely consider subscribing. That helps me out a lot and tells me I'm doing my job right. If you guys have any questions or anything that you want to see, leave a comment. I will most likely be able to get back to you. I'm trying really hard to get back to everybody that leaves comments on my stuff. Um, and thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you being here. And as always, have a good one. See you next time.